in an earlier video, I introduced the idea of potential energy. Potential energy is energy which can be stored by doing work in opposition to a conservative force. For example, if the conservative force is the gravitational force, I can store gravitational potential energy by doing work in opposition to the gravitational force. The other part of it is that potential energy can be converted to kinetic energy as the object returns to its initial position. So if I simply let this bottle return to its initial position, you can see that that gravitational potential energy was converted to kinetic energy. There is one other type of conservative force which we encounter in this class, which is the force exerted by stretched or compressed springs. So let's see if potential energy can be stored by doing work in opposition to an extended spring. So here's what I'm going to do. I have a mass attached to the end of the spring, and I'm going to do work on the mass in opposition to the force that the extended spring is going to exert. Okay, so now I have done work in opposition to the spring force as the spring was being extended. Let's see if I have stored potential energy, which can be converted back into kinetic energy. As you can see, I did store potential energy, which was then converted back into kinetic energy as that mass returned to its initial position. This tells us that as I was extending the spring, I was storing potential energy in the extension of the spring. Now we've seen that we can store potential energy in a spring by doing work in opposition to the spring force when the spring is being extended. Can we also store potential energy in a spring by doing work in opposition to the spring force when the spring is being compressed? Here I have a spring, and I'm going to do work in opposition to the spring force by compressing the spring, and we'll see if we store any potential energy. Okay, so now I've compressed the spring, and I'll release the mass. You see that when I compress the spring and release the mass, the mass leaves the spring with kinetic energy. Where did that kinetic energy come from? Well, it must have come from that potential energy stored in the compressed spring. Now I've shown you that potential energy can be stored in a compressed spring, and also potential energy can be stored in an extended spring. Here I'm going to show you the formulas that we use to calculate the potential energy stored in a compressed spring or in an extended spring. So let's say we have a spring with spring constant K. And let's say that the spring right now is at its resting length. It is not compressed and it is not extended. If the spring is at its resting length, we say that the potential energy stored in the spring is equal to zero. On the other hand, let's say that we take the spring and compress it through a distance x. If the spring has been compressed through a distance x, then the potential energy stored in the spring is one half the spring constant multiplied by the square of the compression of the spring. On the other hand, let's say that we take that resting spring and extend it through a distance x. If the spring has been extended through a distance x, then we say that the potential energy stored in the extended spring is one half the spring constant multiplied by the square of the extension of the spring. Now I've shown you how to calculate the potential energy stored in compressed and extended springs. In the next couple of videos, we will be using these concepts to solve problems involving compressed or extended springs.